In this video, I'm going to review an article by Neil Oden and Matthew McIntosh. And we're going to introduce a, a earn model called the KL Alpha Beta Earn Model. And look at some of its moments and how to use it to calculate uh, some probabilities and how close you are to what you expect. Also, some of the consequences and its connection with the Euler's Triangle. So the brief agenda, we're going to introduce some notations, go through two quick illustrations for this notation, how you use it in clinical trials and use of continued fractions to develop any irrational ratio we want. We'll go through an example. Some of the properties of this earned model, the mean, the variance, calculate some probabilities, and then what is pretty exciting, its connection to Euler's Triangle. So here, for notational purposes, we're going to call it the KL Alpha Beta Earn Model. Uh, this K represents uh, the treatment of interest, and this can be any number from one to pick a number, and it rep in all those that number represents a treatment. This is all other treatments. So the total number of treatments and treatments is in quotes, and you'll see why in a second. It's K plus L. Alpha is the initial state of the urn. There's alpha balls of each color that represents a treatment. And then beta <coughs> is the number of balls of the opposite color that didn't get selected that's put back into the urn to help force it to be balanced. So here we're going to look at a, um, a specific urn. It's the 1111 urn model. And so there's two treatments, uh, K equal 1 and L equal 1. And, and alpha equals 1 means there's one ball of each color in the urn to start out with. And when we draw a ball, we'll put it back and then put beta number balls of the opposite color back. And this uh, diagram, this illustration, if we happen to randomly draw a white, we're going to let the results uh, go down to the right. And if we draw a non-white or a black ball, those will go down to the left. So the possibilities after one draw are we draw a black ball and we put it back and then put one ball of the opposite color in. Or if we go down this possibility, we draw a white ball, we put it back and we, draw two, we put one ball of the opposite color in. And so the number here in circle of one means there's one way to get here and one way to get here. And we'll also introduce a variable, random variable X which represents the number of white balls drawn. X, the only possibilities are 0 and 1 after one draw. After two draws, so if this were our state, our urn, and we draw a black ball, we go down here, we put it back, and we replace it with, we put an additional white ball back. Here, we have 0 balls, we could draw a white, or if we're here with already drawn a white, we could draw a black. Either way, we've drawn one white ball, and this is the state that we're in. Now, the number of ways to get here is four, because there are two ways to, to go down this path, and there's two possibilities in this, so it's two plus two is four. Here, uh, we draw a white ball, so we put it back, and then put one of the opposite color. So x equals zero, one, or two with only possibilities after n equals two. Uh, one more with this example, then we'll move on. Um, if we're here, at, we haven't drawn a white ball. We could technically not draw a white ball again. We put it back, we, we, meaning we draw a black ball. We put it back and we put a beta balls of the opposite color, which is white in, and we've still drawn zero white balls. And we go down here, uh, we could draw a white ball, and there's three possibilities. And so we put it back, we put a ball of the opposite color in. If we were here, at this stage, meaning we have drawn a white ball already, we could draw a non-white or a black ball. And there's uh, two ways to do that. And then that uh, gets us the same stage as if we started here or here. Now the number of ways to to get to this state, there's three ways, three balls we could draw here, but 
but there's one way to get to this so one times three is three plus there were four ways to get to here but there's two ways to draw a black ball so there's eight possible ways down this path so eight plus three is eleven in the same way here uh, draw a white ball put it back put in an extra black if we were here we draw a black ball we put it back put in an extra white ball uh, same way here so these are the number of ways that for each state x equals 0 1 2 or 3 to calculate a probability say after three draws what's the probability that we've drawn exactly one white ball well it's 11 over the total here which is 24 so 11 over 24 is a probability that we have exactly one white ball after three draws so another quick example we're going to look at here is the K3L2 alpha 2 beta 3 model so here the K represents the number of white treatments so um, there's three here and L equals the non-white okay so this could be a 3 to 2 randomization for two treatment arms or it could also represent a uh, a 3 to 1 to 1 ratio if this were an X and maybe this is a square or something but in this in this representation we are interested in this treatment arm which is here okay so we put alpha equal two of each treatment in the urn and when when we draw happen to draw one say the, a white ball here we put it back but then we have to put beta balls of each of the other colors in so the initial start is six white four black and then we proceed so on the first draw we could uh, draw a black ball there's four different ways to draw it so we put that black ball back and we add three of the other black and then we add nine white balls back to the urn and we've drawn zero white balls here we draw a white ball there's six possibilities to draw a white so we put it back add six of other white balls and six black balls and these are the states we've drawn zero white and we've drawn one white uh, four six so the that's the total number of ways that helps in calculating probabilities so here after two draws um, this is the state so here we draw a black ball there's seven different ways because there's seven black balls we put it back add three of the other black and then we add nine of the white now there's 28 ways to get here because there were four ways to get here and then there's seven to get here so four times seven is 28 here if we were in this urn we draw a white ball and there's 15 different ways so we would put one of those back and we would add six whites and six blacks and then if we were here we would um, add that uh, draw a black ball there's 10 different ways to draw a black ball you put it back you add three black and, and nine whites to this um, the number of ways to get here is six times ten plus four times fifteen which is 120 and here we draw a white ball there's 12 ways uh, replace that white ball add six more whites that of the up you know up other whites and then uh, add six black balls so and then we just keep going down um, here we, we draw a black ball there's 10 different ways we put it back we add the right number of white balls and black balls here we draw a white draw a black draw a white draw a black draw a white and these are the different states so, so now to calculate the probability of exactly one white ball drawn out of three attempts it's 2,232 over whatever these add to. Now we'll come back to this example later in the talk, but you can see that these numbers start to grow pretty quickly. All right, so how are we going to use this in a clinical trial? So in this setting, we have uh, two treatment arms, one here and one here. We start with the urn of alpha of each color and add beta balls back of the opposite color that we select now if this is our model a two to one to alpha beta 
this is exactly two treatment arms because this is one always one treatment and this is could be several but since there's one it has to be two and it's in a two to one randomization um, here um, this could be it could be a two treatment arm urn model where we have a one to two ratio for the two treatment arms or it could be a one to one to one it could be three treatment arms but we set it up like this because we're studying this treatment arm right there um, we're going to look at the properties of that and then the others don't matter so this is treatment a and it could be treatment a b c or just a and b depending upon which ratio you want now using the uh, urn models we can actually do any ratio we want even uh, irrational and I'm just going to briefly talk about continued fractions um, the the there's a series here and I won't go into it fascinating property actually each of these ratios get a little bit a little bit closer to the square root of two so um, if we chose a seven to five ratio that's really close to square root of two uh, if we're doing square root of three we could do a seven to four ratio and that's really close to the square root of three there's square root of two square root of five could you could use one of these and I list several the further you go out in a continued fraction the more accurate or closer it is to the decimal representation of five okay so you might ask well why is that important well if uh, let's say we have a three treatment arms uh, two two treatment and we're comparing to one control arm some would argue that this would be an optimal ratio of two treatments compared to one control arm and because the continued fraction of radical two is seven over five or seventeen twelfths those are the numbers that we would use to obtain this ratio so for instance if we use seven over five and we wanted to study the the uh, control arm we would put seven there and then five and five is ten so remember this is a three arm study one one or if we wanted to look at one of the treatment arms we'd put five here and five and seven here and and either of these urns obtains the one to one to square root of two ratio um, and of course you could use the bigger ratio of 17 to 12 17 12 and 12 or 12 and 12 and 17 and you'll come up with this same one to one to square root of two ratio but it's whatever's in this first uh, position here is what the uh, what we're going to study but how to use it here's a very very quick example so let's say we use a one two one one model so, but here two represents actually two treatments so we have three treatment arms a one to one to one ratio uh, we're going to call uh, the circle ball to treatment a the x ball treatment b the square uh, treatment c and we start out one of each ball because that's what alpha is and if we happen to draw a circle we assign that patient to A we put it back and add beta balls of the opposite colors which is one if we happen to draw an X ball we assign that next patient to B we put it back add one of each if we draw another X ball we assign them to patient B we put it back and then add one to the other arms and we just keep repeating and repeating and um, what we want to do is look at the properties of the treatment A and that's the what we're going to do here is the properties of the urn model and remember we want to examine this treatment arm here um, it converges so quickly to a normal distribution and some of this is uh, properties we use from Euler's triangle it's been shown to to converge very quickly to normal distribution and there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between this and Euler's triangle which we'll get we'll talk about when we get on the uh, computer in a minute so here the mean is k the mean of this treatment arm is kn over kl and n is the number of draws and the variance is this closed form expression uh, where v is is this formula Okay. 
So, but once this is entered into a computer, then it's it's a click of a button. And so now let me get on to Maxima, which I started learning about a week and a half ago, and it's a pretty powerful free package. Okay, here's Mathematica, and we're going to investigate the earn the KL alpha beta earn model, and we create a function to generate the numbers of the urn which ends up being equivalent to the Eulerian triangle so I just call it Euler's triangle here but it really can be used to generate these urn probabilities and we'll see that at the very end and we calculate the variance based on first principles of this urn model so we grab the nth row divide each one by the sum of each element then we create a variable from 0 to the length minus 1 and then calculate the variance and then here is how we calculate the variant the closed form expression for the variance from the uh, Odin Macintosh manuscript here's the mean of the nth row using first principles and then here's the the closed form expression and if we look at the first 10 rows of the k equal 3, l equal 2, alpha 2, beta 3 triangle, this is it. And, and if you look back at page 3, these numbers were the exact numbers that we were getting as we were illustrating the urn model. Now this, as a reminder, could be two treatment arms in a 3 to 2 randomization scheme or it could be three treatment arms in a 3 to 1 to 1 but we only study the first treatment in quotes now here this is if we use 40 or 400 or 4,000 or 4 million this just tells you how many rows to generate but the first 10 will always be the same no matter what we pick and if we look at the 40th row of this triangle. These numbers are huge. So this number is the number of ways that you can draw zero white balls using this urn model. That's the number of ways for 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 40. And that is large. So the recursive approach is quite large. And if you're going to randomize, you know, a few hundred patients to a clinical trial, the recursive approach is definitely not the way to go. You have to use the uh, the normal approximation to this and with the exact mean and variance not not asymptotic results but the exact and so one thing to remember and I'll illustrate this later is that the urn model is is one different than the Euler model so the Euler triangle starts at the first entry and then the next one is 2 where we start at 0 and then we go to 1 representing the first random draw of a ball and so if you look this is the ninth row of the Euler's triangle or the eighth row of the urn model and then the means and the variances are the same for both here I have to load the statistical software package in Maxima to illustrate these examples and so this is just a function to um, to show you how exact these uh, the normal estimate is so if we look at uh, an, a 1111 model with eight ran eight draws and we plot it this is the this is the model so the red are the exact probabilities based on the recursive method so it's exact and then we use a normal approximation with the mean and variance from the manuscript to, and you could see that it's it is very very close and this only increases as in the accuracy increases as the number of draws you take and so this the randomizing 88 subjects there are right on top of each other so to calculate probabilities if you're just one off you just add the height of those three dots or you know if you find the area under the curve with the continuity correction you just sum from there to there and these work for any you know any parameter so let's say we put a, a 10 in there 
and then do it again and that shifts it there it's it's also the same now it's it's often known well it's known that if you increase beta which is the number of balls you put of the opposite color back in it forces balance faster than if you if you don't put as many beta balls back in of the opposite color so here's an illustration of the balancing effect so let's go we have we randomized eight patients in a one-to-one -one, two treatment arms alpha 1 beta 15 and what this will do is cycle through the different values of beta so this is this is the distribution we get when beta is 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and etc and so the effect of increasing beta to force balance is not it's not a huge effect and the effect goes away the larger the number so if, if we randomize 88 patients then the all each of these lines are right on top of each other you can sort of see beta 1 right there so the the, the more randomized to a clinical trial the less important increase in beta is now if to calculate probabilities uh, if we if we want to find the probability that we're most three away from what we expect then you can calculate the area under the curve and here I use beta 1 and beta 10 to show you that the effect of increasing beta is not that much. The probability that we're within three of the mean is 89.4 and 89.6. Now this here is the exciting, one, another exciting point is that when we were calculating these triangles we noticed that the number of possibilities of drawing zero white and one white and two white ended up being exactly the Euler's triangle. So this is Euler's triangle. And then, we, and then we noticed that you could generate any triangle you want. And so here's a general Euler triangle that I saw was developed, um, you know, four or five years after our manuscript. And it, and it generates this with uh, alpha 5 and beta, beta 10. But if you want to generate the Euler triangle of the second kind or second order, it's 2, 1, 1, 1. And there it is. Now, the beauty of this to reverse each of those you just switch the K and the L so you put K1 here and L2 and keep those the same and then you have the reversed Eulerian triangle of the second order second kind here's the Euler triangle type B then I just started putting random uh, triangles in the mathematical sequence website and here's Del Gerdman. He, he has several triangles that represent these models. He has one for 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 3, 1. And then here's some where the alpha and beta are equal. And I just generated one at random to show you that that cre recreates the ones there. Here, uh, Roger Bagala posted several sequences corresponding to the 1, 1, 1, and then beta went from 3, 4, 5. I don't know if it goes more. I didn't check. But here is the beta 3 one. And to do it, I just I would just generate triangles. I would copy this, paste it into the mathematical sequence website, and find triangle. There's dozens and dozens that this uh, creates. Anyway, I just find this all pretty fascinating. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And I will see you later.